Brilliant. Thank you very much, Maren. Um, it's lovely to be here taking part in the online summit and it's great to see uh, lots of familiar names and faces um, in the session and also some new um, friends as well. So um, thank you for coming and joining us this morning. Um, so as Maren said, my name's um, Lorna Campbell and I work for the Open Education Resources Service at the University of Edinburgh. And I'm also a trustee of ALT and Wikimedia UK. And I'm talking today from Glasgow, where it's extremely wet and rainy, like I think most of the rest of Scotland is. Um, but hopefully this will be a, a bright and interesting session. Um, so what I want to talk to you about today is how the University of Edinburgh's strategic commitment to open education resources and open knowledge enabled it um, to respond to the unique challenges um, of the COVID-19 pandemic. So at the height of the pandemic, UNESCO estimated that 1.57 billion learners in 191 countries had had their education disrupted. And in response to this unprecedented crisis, the organisation issued a call for joint action to support learning and knowledge sharing through open education resources. The call highlights the important role that OER can play in supporting the continuation of learning in both formal and informal settings, meeting the needs of individual learners, including people with disabilities and individuals from marginalised and disadvantaged groups, with a view to building more inclusive, sustainable and resilient knowledge societies. This joint call for action builds on UNESCO's 2019 recommendation on open education resources. And this document represents a formal commitment to actively support the global adoption of OER. And central to this recommendation is the acknowledgement of the role that OER play in achieving United Nations Sustainable Development Goal 4 for quality education. And the, rec and the recommendation recognises that in building inclusive knowledge societies, open education resources can support quality education that is equitable, inclusive, open and participatory, as well as enhancing academic freedom and the professional autonomy of teachers by widening the scope of materials available for teaching and learning. And the recommendation outlines these five areas of action to build capacity around OER, to develop supportive policy, encourage effective, inclusive and equitable access to OER, to nurture the creation of sustainability models and to promote and reinforce international cooperation. At the University of Edinburgh, we believe that supporting OER and open knowledge is strongly in keeping with our institutional vision and values to discover knowledge and make the world a better place and to ensure that our teaching and research is accessible, inclusive and relevant to society. In line with the UNESCO OER recommendation, we also believe that OER and open knowledge can contribute to achieving the aims of, of United Nations Sustainable Development Goals which the university is committed to through the SDG Accord. This commitment to OER is reflected in the university's OER policy, approved by our Learning and Teaching Committee in 2015, which encourages staff and students to use and create OER to enhance the quality of the student experience, expand provision of learning opportunities and enrich our shared knowledge commons. And to support this policy, we also have an OER service that provides staff and students with advice and guidance on creating and using OER and engaging with open education. And we run a wide range of digital skills workshops for staff and students focused on copyright literacy, open licensing, OER and playful engagement. And the OER service places openness at the heart of the university strategic initiatives including lecture recording, academic blogging, virtual learning environments, MOOCs and distance learning at scale, in order to build sustainability and minimise the risk of what my senior colleague Melissa Hyten has referred to as copyright debt. 
And we also maintain a one-stop shop that provides access to open education resources created by staff and students across the university. We don't have a single centralised OER repository. Instead, we encourage colleagues to share resources where they can be easily found by those who may benefit from reusing them. And to this end, we maintain open ed accounts on a number of channels, including Media Hopper Create, which is our media asset management platform, Flickr, Sketchfab, and Tez Resources. And we aggregate a showcase of resources on the Open Ed website, which is built on the WordPress open source platform. And this strategic support for OER and open knowledge enabled the university to respond rapidly to the uniquely complex challenges presented by the global, global COVID-19 pandemic when the UK went into lockdown in March this year. And what I want to do now is to highlight some of those responses. As soon as COVID-19 hit the UK, it became evident from frontline clinical staff would be required to work in critical care environments they weren't familiar with or hadn't been trained in for a long time. And the team behind the university's Masters in Critical Care realised that content from their course would be extremely valuable to these healthcare professionals and wasted no time planning what they could do to share this information with those that might need it. Even before the UK lockdown was announced, the Masters in Critical Care team, led by Dr Graham Nimmo, contacted the university's OER service for advice and guidance on sharing their resources as widely as possible. While the critical care team identified which resources would be most useful, learning technologists explored which platform would be best suited to hosting the content. The initial plan was to share the learning resources as a public course on the university's search central virtual learning environment. However, there was concern that demand could overwhelm a platform that was critical to ensuring teaching continuity at a time when courses were rapidly pivoting to online delivery. Instead, the university approached FutureLearn, one of the online course providers it already had a partnership with, and they agreed to host the resources at short notice. Under normal circumstances, creating a new MOOC would take around six to nine months and would undergo a thorough learning design process. However, with the UK pandemic's peak looming, the team decided that it was vital to make their resources available as quickly as possible. And over the course of a week from Saturday 28 March, members of the university's online learning service worked tirelessly with the critical care team and FutureLearn to migrate content from the MSc course onto the FutureLearn platform. Meanwhile, specially recruited subject matter experts created additional resources to fill any gaps and complete the overall learning package. Just nine days later and three weeks into lockdown, the educational resources went live on Sunday the 5th of April. Now FutureLearn have a quality assurance process that normally takes 30 days. But given the exceptional circumstances, they accelerated this process with the team resolving 40 essential actions in 26 hours to enable the resources to launch. Over 5,000 learners enrolled on the first day of the course and by, by the end of the first six week run, over 40,000 learners from 189 countries had accessed the learning materials. The course itself teaches healthcare professionals how to care for critically ill patients during the COVID-19 pandemic, covering daily practice for frontline clinical staff, supporting critical care patients with and without COVID-19, applying ventilation and organ support principles, PPE requirements and staff and patient safety. The course also helps to facilitate healthcare professionals' emotional and physical self-care and well-being in this high-stress, high-risk environment and help them to develop the practices to emotionally support both themselves and their colleagues. The Future Learn Critical Care course has now run twice and open licensed videos from the critical care team are also available to access and reuse under open license from the university's Media Hopper Create service. The university's strategic support for OER and open knowledge and Future Learn's willingness to bend their own rules helped enable us to develop this resource at speed. 
The team comprised staff from the University, FutureLearn, NHS Lothian, the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh and NHS Education Scotland, who came together to make something positive happen at a difficult and stressful time for many. However, knowing how valuable this educational resource would be to staff on the front line of critical care motivated this team to make the impossible happen. And you can find out more about this amazing achievement uh, in this news item by my colleague Lauren Johnson-Smith. Elsewhere in the university, colleagues were working tirelessly to address the lack of personal protective equipment faced by healthcare staff in the early stages of the pandemic. Labs, workshops and maker spaces around the university began producing visors and face shields based on existing open license models. Oops. Colleagues at Ucreate Studio, the university's maker space, developed a 3D printing model for stackable protective visors based on the open licensed 3D Verxton model and refined it for single filament printing. And a different version of the same open licensed model was created by technicians at the School of Informatics, who set up a face shield printing factory and worked seven days a week to produce hundreds of face shields a day for NHS and care home staff. Meanwhile, technicians at the School of Engineering developed a process to laser cut face, full face visors with adjustable headbands using automated laser cutting machines. And in addition to producing PPE to help protect healthcare workers, the models developed by Ucreate Studio Informatics and the School of Engineering were released under Creative Commons licenses and shared on the OER services Sketchfab account, where they can be downloaded and reused by all. Providing open access to high quality online learning opportunities and widening access to our scholarship has always been an important cornerstone of the university's commitment to open knowledge exchange and community outreach. And we provide a wide range of online courses, including master's degrees, MOOCs and MicroMasters programmes. Ensuring continued access to course resources for our many online learners has always been a priority, and now more so than ever, whether these learners are among the 4,000 matriculated students enrolled on our online courses, or the 2.7 million learners who have signed up for the many MOOCs that we offer. Continued access to MOOC content can be problematic, as education content often gets locked up into commercial platforms, regardless of whether it's open licensed or not. And some platforms now routinely time limit access to resources. Clearly, this is not helpful for learners, particularly at a time when they might find it challenging to meet fixed deadlines as a result of other personal commitments and stresses in their lives. So in order to address this issue, the OER service works closely with our online learning service and course production teams to ensure that the majority of the online content can be released under open license on our media asset management platform. As a result of our long-standing commitment to OER and open knowledge, we now have over 3,000 Creative Commons licensed videos on MediaHopper Create, including 527 high-quality audio and video resources created for our MOOCs, which can be accessed and downloaded from our Open Media Bank channel. The Open Media Bank hosts legacy content covering a wide range of topics, including some that directly address the challenges of the pandemic, such as videos from our former MOOC, Critical Thinking and Global Challenges, from the School of Biomedical Sciences. These videos explore important global challenges to which we have no clear, correct solutions, including the spread of infectious diseases and epidemics in modern society, and the challenges of human health and well-being in the modern world. Our commitment to knowledge exchange and community outreach also extends to the sector. Through TES resources, the OER service shares a growing collection of interdisciplinary teaching and learning materials aimed at primary and secondary school level, covering topics as diverse as climate change, environmental science, food production, sustainable fashion, biodiversity, LGBT plus issues, sustainability and outdoor learning. 
These fun and creative resources are free and open licensed and designed to be easily customizable for different learning scenarios. And all are accompanied by SCQF levels and Scottish Curriculum for Excellence learning objectives and outcomes. With schools closing as a result of lockdown and parents suddenly faced with the reality of homeschooling, the OER service used its social media channels to disseminate this ready-made collection of free teaching resources to people who might need them. And you can see here how downloads of these free resources peaked in the first three months of lockdown. Uh, and we'll be adding more resources to this collection very shortly. But one of the really nice things about this collection of open education resources is that they've all been co-created by undergraduates and student interns in, col in collaboration with colleagues from the School of Geosciences, supported by the OER service. So this is a really lovely example of the benefits of open education and co-creation in action. And of course, we've also been supporting our own colleagues at the university as they adapted first to the rapid online pivot at the start of lockdown and now as they prepare to move to a model of hybrid teaching at the start of semester one. The OER service was already running a digital skills programme which focuses on copyright literacy, open licensing and OER. And this helps to equip staff with the knowledge and confidence they need to successfully move their teaching materials online while minimising the risk to the university of breaching copies. In response to increased demand and to, unique, to meet the unique needs of moving to our new hybrid model of teaching and learning, the OER service moved its entire digital skills programme online and rolled out a number of new courses, including copyright licensing and open materials for hybrid teaching, building blocks of UK copyright and exceptions, and Creative Commons Quick Start, a short introduction to using CC licenses in our core tool set. And although our digital skills session are open to staff and students of the university, all our workshop materials, including slide decks and videos, are freely available under open license, including videos of our popular digital skills workshop, Will It Bite Me? Media Licensing and Online Teaching Environments. And those of you who might have been in Jane and Chris's session uh, just before this um, will probably be aware of the, the real need um, for uh, guidance and training around copyright use at this point in time. Caring for mental health at a time of unprecedented stress and uncertainty is a priority for all of us. And over the last six months, the OER has shared a wealth of resources to support mental health and well-being created by staff and students around the university. These include Mental Health, a Global Priority podcasts and videos, a Mental Health and Wellbeing booklet for children aged 12 upwards, the lovely We Have Great Stuff colouring book, which my colleague Stuart Cromer shared at last year's old conference in Edinburgh. And I hope some of you were able to pick up a copy of this. If not, you can download it from the URL here. And treasures from the university's collections, which we shared through our social media channel, such as images of our campus and the surrounding city for people who might be missing it. Um, entertaining images from the university's collections. And we even found a lovely image of Barnard Castle, which we were able to share in May for those who weren't able to visit it in person. And I want to end now by returning to the UNESCO call for joint action to support learning and knowledge sharing through OER. And this quote from Moes Chakchuk, Assistant Director General for Communication and Information, and Stefani Giannini, Assistant Director General for Education. Today, we are at a pivotal moment in history. The COVID-19 crisis has resulted in a paradigm shift on how learners of all ages worldwide can access learning. It's therefore more than ever essential that the global community comes together now to foster universal access to information and knowledge through open education resources. And before I sign off, I just want to acknowledge the work of all my colleagues at the University of Edinburgh who have been talking about today. And these are just some of the people who really made a big difference. Thank you. Thank you very much.
um, really interesting and boy you guys have been super busy i have to say i'm really really um bowled over by how much you've been um sharing and and sharing with everybody in the sector so well deserved round of applause and wonderful timing as well um because we still have about five six minutes for questions so for everybody in the room um we'll be monitoring the chat or if any of you would like to raise their hand and ask a question and um, we can give you the mic as well and you can ask a question in person so we have time for a couple of questions i'm sure lorna will be um keen to hear from you so we'll wait for a couple of minutes to see if anybody has any particular questions um i think lorna if it's okay i might jump in and start with one um, so you've done so much and mm -hmm. term is about to start mm -hmm. um can you give us any kind of glimpses as to any area of this work that is kind of going to be at the forefront of the start of the term well, one of the things that were um, particularly within the OER service, so I, I should point out that when we talk about the universities of, University of Edinburgh's OER service, it, it can sound like a very, very grand. The University of Edinburgh's OER service is composed of myself and my colleague, um, Charlie Farley. I also work on other services as well. So we're the two dedicated staff and service, but of course we're supported by all our learning technology colleagues. And really what we're doing just now is we're focused um, entirely on um, supporting the, the move to hybrid teaching to ensure that um, our students will have a good experience and that our staff feel supported. Within yeah. the OER service, that means providing a lot of reassurance around copyright. So as I said, we've sort of increased the number of digital skills workshops we run. We also run bespoke sessions for schools and colleges. Um, colleagues are all welcome to approach us directly. We're also ensuring that we have consistent messaging across our services about how to deal with copyright and open licensing, whether it's in the virtual learning environment or in our, our, our media asset management platform, and that we have policies in place um, that, are, that, that respect uh, people's rights and people's copyright and uh, licensing. So, so those are the areas that the OER service is very focused on on the moment. Um, and I think one of the things that we potentially want to look at um, going forward into the term is open textbooks, which is not an area that we've been hugely involved with to date. Um, but given the, the rising costs of e-textbooks that the university is facing, I think really we, we now is absolutely the time when we should be looking at open textbooks. Yeah. That that's sort of, I think, resonates a lot with people in the room. And I can see there are a lot and a lot of love and admiration for all the work you've done. Um, we've got a couple of questions in the chat, so I'm going to pick um, one that I think Tom Farrelly posted originally, which is around, you know, are all these resources in different places? Is there a central place? Um, and could you tell us a little bit about what staff and maybe um, the wider community, um, how they can be discovering those resources? So, as I said, we don't have a central repository um, of open education resources in Edinburgh, and that was that was a very strategic decision not to have one because, um, from our experience, not just within Edinburgh but right across the UK, I think those of us who have got long memories perhaps will know that it's actually very difficult to sustain repositories of open education resources if there are already other repositories elsewhere because education resources by their nature are quite fluid and changing all the time. So we don't have one central repository but what we do have is the OpenEd website um, so open.ed.ac.uk and that's really our showcase that's where we aggregate um, nice examples of open education practice and open education resources from around the university absolutely everything in there that that would be almost impossible and like i said on our media asset management platform media hopper create there are over three thousand open license videos there alone wow. but what we try to do is ensure that our staff and our students have um understand about copyright and about open education resources so that they know where to find and access not just resources created by their peers but also accessing um open education resources elsewhere across the web so we really do focus on digital literacy that's really kind of our our our, our core um 
uh, the late response to, is, is to upskill staff um, rather than just maintaining a static repository. Thanks, Lorna. Um, we're going to pick up another question, um, or rather, we're going to try and combine two questions in into your last um, one. One is from Jane Secker, who's um, curious about what sort of take up you've had from staff. Um, mm -hmm. She's doing a session on OER next week for staff and wondering how many people will come. Um, mm -hmm. And then further down in the chat, um, there's been a sort of um, related question from Moira, who was keen about specifically the response from senior managers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so, if, I can, if I can take Moira's question first, um, we um, the OER service um, wouldn't um, exist without the support of um, senior managers. And I don't know if my colleague Melissa Highton um, is in the chat or in this session, um, but she very much provided the vision um, for open education resources um, in the university <clears throat> and was responsible for um, really getting senior management buy-in and that has been absolutely critical um, mm -hmm. in the university. Um, we also, um, student engagement is very important as well and that's the fact the university student union was also instrumental in uh, pushing for the um, an open education resources policy. So I think having that commitment um, from a really visionary senior management together with the support of the student association um, mm -hmm. was really important to getting this buy-in. Um, and the other question was, sorry, from Jane, Jane about um, staff. what take up do we get? From staff, yeah. It, it varies widely and wildly um, depending on what stage of term we're at. Um, specifically what the what the webinars are so we run sort of general ones about open education and OER we run very specific ones about copyright we run ones just about creative commons hundreds of signups we do we run our workshops at least once or twice a month so they're always ongoing mm -hmm. and they're always as well so we maybe get about um, you know 20 odd signups for each session. Uh, we have some drop off, always that's the case. Um, but what we do find is that even where we get low numbers, we get very high engagement. Okay. Um, it's very common for those people who do come to our workshops to follow up with a request that we then do a bespoke session for their school or their college or their online masters or their students. Um, so so that's that's one thing that is, is very common, that the numbers may not be high, but the engagement is really great. And the other thing I would say is that because we are also embedded in these kind of strategic technology initiatives I mentioned, like when we rolled out lecture recording, one of the first things we did was we ran um, work, digital skills workshops on copyright for lecture recording, and we got very high take, take up of those ones. I think by being embedded in these strategic initiatives, we reach parts of the university that we perhaps wouldn't otherwise with just the two of us. Fantastic. Um, thank you very much, Lorna. Um, we're going to pause here before we hand over to our next.